Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. I hope you all are doing extremely well. So today in this video, we are going to solve the problem of the day on the Geeks for Geeks platform. So today's problem is shortest path between cities, right? So first of all, we'll be understanding the problem statement and the logic part, and then we'll be proceeding to the coding part. But before proceeding further in the video, if you are new to this channel or if you haven't subscribed my channel till now, then guys do consider subscribing my channel. It will really motivate me to create more such content for you, and I wish the channel will be helpful for you. So let's get started with the problem statement then. So problem says, Geek lives in a spacious city where houses are arranged in hierarchical manner. Starting from house number one, each house leads to two more houses. One leads to two and three. Two leads to four and five. Three leads to six and seven, and so on. Given the house numbers on two houses X and Y, we have to find the length of the shortest path between them. For example, so here you can see we have X equal to two and Y equal to six, right? So output we are getting is three. So let's see how two and six, right? This this is the X and Y value we are having. So if you will see from here. So two say one, then one say three, then three say six. So one two three. So this is the distance, right? So the length of the shortest path between two and six is two one three six, right? So we are getting output as three, because you can see there are three edges. One two three. Okay. Then uh, for input eight and ten, so the output is four. So we are getting four, right? So let's understand how. So here we do have this node eight, and here we do have this ten. So Eight say four, four say two, two say five, and then five say ten. So one, two, three, four, right? So that's why we are getting four. So what actually we have to do is we have to complete the function shortest path, which takes integers x and y as input parameters and returns the length of the shortest path from x to y. Here they have mentioned the expected time complexity auxiliary space as well. So first let's try to understand this problem. It's more of like an observation based problem. So let's understand. What actually we have to do? Otherwise, like it's an easy problem only. So let's take a note first. If I am taking this two, right? So first try to understand the relationship between a parent and the child. Parent and the child note. So here we have this two, right? So if I have to find the parent, th this child, right? So you can see what they are doing is for obtaining four. What I have to do in this note, in the parent note, I have to do two into two. So I'll be getting four. And two into two plus one will be providing five. Similarly, if here you will pick that one for three. So three into two will get six, and three into two plus one will get seven. Take any one. So if we taking six, so six into two will get twelve, and six into two plus one will get thirteen. Right. So now you have understand the relationship between the parent and the child node. So if you will clearly observe this tree, right. So here what is happening for two and six. For two and six, if I'm asking you, what is the lowest common ancestor? What is LCA? What is that? That is one. And with the help of it, uh, I see that we can determine the we can determine the length of the shortest part. For example, here also, here also you can see uh, for eight and ten. So what is the LCA for eight and ten? If I'm asking, that is two, right? So with the help of it. We can uh, determine the length that has been asked in the question. So, see if we are starting from eight, right? Or if you are starting from ten, right? Like eight or ten. So, if I have to move above, because here what we are focusing on on the LCA part. So, for LCA, obviously we have to move above to this node, then to this node. Now, how you will determine that we have reached to that particular node, which is the lowest common ancestor, which is common between both these nodes. When the value became equal for x and y, when the value became equal, we can say that okay, we have reached that node which is the lowest common ancestor for x and y, and for that we have to move above. So I already explained the relation between parent and child. This is two i and two i plus one. So what we can do is, if we are taking this eight, right? So we have to, if we are dividing this by two, so we'll be reaching to four. And if we are dividing this four by two, we'll be reaching to this two. Similarly for this ten, if I'm dividing ten by two, I'll be reaching to this five, and then five with two, so I'll be reaching to this two, right? So simply we don't have to do anything. The logic is pretty simple, I guess. Now we have to keep on dividing x and y values, right, till the time the value of x or y is not equal. So x equal equal to y. That's what we have to check, right? And when while doing this, we have to increment the count as well because that will help us to determine the length. 
that will help us to determine the length so see what i have written uh okay so this will be the value that we are going to return so y x is not equal to y what we have to do so we have to check like which value is smaller right which value is smaller for example in this 2 and 6 6 is the smaller right y was a smaller so what we're going to do is we are going to reduce 6 by a factor of 2 so y divided by 2 so we'll be getting what 3 Okay, we'll be getting what three, and by continuing this loop now, we are incrementing the value of R E S as well. So R E S will be what now? It will be one. Then we have X is two and Y is three. Which one is greater? Obviously, Y is greater. So again, we'll be doing what? We'll be dividing this three by two. So you'll be getting what one. Okay. Then R E S will be what two. Then uh, X value is two and Y value is one. Right? So X is smaller. So we are going to divide X by two. So we'll be getting what one. Right and R E S will be three this time. Now we're gonna compare again. So now X and Y, y both values are equal. That is both values are one. So we are going to uh, like this loop condition is not going to be true. And at the end we are simply returning R E S. Right. So that's what the complete logic for this particular problem. And uh, I hope that you are clear with the code part as well because that so was an easy one. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you must have understood. If this is so, then make sure to hit the like button. Don't forget to share and subscribe my channel. Thank you, everyone, for watching.